Okay, welcome everybody to our meeting. Well, meeting to our talk tonight. Um, my name is Emma and I'm here with Marina, who I'm going to officially introduce in a moment. But I just wanted to let you know, if you're listening live, that I really appreciate you being here. And if you're listening to this in the future, then thank you also for investing your time in listening to us talk so we welcome we welcome any feedback after you've listened as well and we'll have a little bit of time for q and a at the end so i want to kind of officially introduce marina i always think it's really funny to introduce someone else because i always think that person knows themselves a lot better than the person that's speaking about them <laughs> but i'll i'll go with what i know so first and foremost, I know Marina to be probably one of the best coffee dates you could have. Minimum two hours. You do not even know you've been there for longer than 30 minutes because the conversation is so brilliant. So that's first and foremost. And then secondly, I've written down some notes. So I've got that you are a Kashik Records reader, Arrow, confidence coach, human design and astrology, and I just took notes also when I was looking at Instagram, guiding you to be your most empowered self. Mm. And I was scrolling through your Instagram today as well. And I noted down, despite the outcome, focus on the process. Oh. Which I just, I was like, yes. <laughs> that is it. And then what was it? Was it something you said on your Instagram today about curiosity? About following your curiosity following your curiosity and I love that as well so welcome Marina to today's talk of course and I'll have more information at the end Marina will be facilitating uh, sessions on the Loch Lomond retreat coming up in June as well but first and foremost Marina I'd love for you to share in your words mm. what it is that you do Thank you. Thank you so much for introducing me as well. What a lovely introduction. And I love that you started with coffee shop dates because it's one of the highlights of my month. And it's sad that we only <laughs> did them once a month. Maybe we should do more. <laughs> for sure. Um, as uh, Em said, I am a coach and mentor first and foremost, and I use a range of modalities, including the Akashic Records, human design, tarot, astrology, and, and more. Um, and I love marrying all of these things together to get a full picture of who my client is and give them the tools to empower themselves. And that's why I'm incredibly excited to bring these things to Emma's retreat in June, too. And thank you for having me today. Oh, you're welcome. So I just want to dive straight in because one thing I've got a couple of questions here, but one thing that I really appreciated about when I met you at the um, network event. What was the network event called? I don't Edinburgh know. Wellbeing. Edinburgh Wellbeing. Um, was that you felt really grounded in your energy. Yet when we met for coffee that time, you coached me, I'm sure, about a couple of things in like everyday <laughs> life. And then you were like, I do all this stuff. And I was like, whoa, what is this stuff? And this, what I'm referring to is the stuff, right, is the magic, you could say. But it's actually, I was thinking about this today, it's actually what we should be listening to. Mm. And I was observing someone today and I was just making up my own story about this person. So it was completely judgmental. Um, but in that moment, I thought, I wonder if they ever do any of this stuff. I wonder where they get their inspiration from. Is it from Google? Is it from the internet? Is it from Instagram? Is it from TikTok? Is it from all these things that we now see as reality and ways of guiding ourselves? Or do they follow the moon cycle? And you shared something on your Instagram uh, recently, maybe even today or yesterday, about how you have let's call them professionals, <laughs> we're all professionals, but professionals, let's say doctors and um, people like that, financial people that do your work as well. And I'd love for you to speak a little bit about that um, and what your reason was for sharing that regular people, <laughs> I'm trying to find better words, but you know what I mean, and now taking this work that is often seen as 
spiritual or woo or beyond what most people will often tap into for direction Mm -hmm, absolutely um great question I feel a lot of people shy away from spiritual tools modalities the woo the work because it feels inaccessible you feel like you have to be high vibes only you know wearing you know 100% organic cotton running through fields with crystals in your bra (laughs) <laughs> and it's just not the case. You know, anyone from sort of one end of life to another can tap into and use spiritual tools, spiritual modalities to make their life easier. You know, it's it's pushed to the side as woo, which is used in a disparaging way. But I'm here to reclaim woo as something wonderful and magical. Um, and, you know, there is this belief, well, you couldn't possibly believe that if you're sort of scientific or if you have this sort of uh, come from a place of knowledge. But actually, the basis of woo, there is so much science within it. You know, it is this inner knowledge, this ancient wisdom. And when people tap into it, you can't deny the results, you know, easy decision making, you feel more aligned, you know yourself better, you're able to connect more easily with other people. Um, And so that's why I have shared that, you know, whether you're sort of running through fields with crystals in your bra or sitting at the desk from sort of nine till six in a big sort of tower block, you know, you can still do exactly the same modalities and benefit from it in exactly the same ways. Mm, mm, I love that and I'm going to reference a film that is probably well I don't even know what year it's from so we're not going to go there but I'm presuming that most people have seen Pretty Woman uh with Richard Gere if you haven't please go and watch it um but at the end of the movie he's like this high-flying kind of like business guy and at the end of the film you see him take his shoes off and he's walking on this little patch of grass outside his like office block and now that I'm more in the wellness world, I'm like, yes, it was, it's always been about, but I think now that technology is so, so much part of our lives, I think it creates a barrier to the actual real connection of ourself. Like it's much easier to go onto Google than to sit and actually think, okay, what, what is my answer? Mm-hmm. And that's why I really appreciate your work, that it kind of connects us back towards ourself um, within this world of technology, because the technology is not going away. And that brings me really nicely onto, so if you can hear any noise, listeners, that's my husband just trying to quietly open some mini eggs. <laughs> Tis the season, right? <laughs> Tis the season. Yes, technically in January. Um one of the reasons I wanted uh, to bring work like yours into the Loch Lomond retreat is that it feels like a real place of, especially where it is in nature, of like not necessarily stepping away from the world because we're always in the world, we're just in a different environment, but being in that place of, you could say, discovery or we haven't got the usual distractions around us. And um, so I'd love to ask you first and foremost, before I go into what you shared with me on my reading, but why is knowing your soul frequency important? And what is your soul frequency? (laughs) Oh, I've got so much to say about this. (laughs) So in as quick as possible and as clear as possible, each one of us has a soul. And there is a frequency by which our soul vibrates. And that is the same across any lifetime we have been. And it's something that is unique to us. It holds information about our gifts, our soul power, what comes naturally to us. Now, the reason why this is one of my most favorite things to do with people is because we are so disconnected to our soul frequency. In this day and age, we are taught that skill and gifts and power comes from hard work, years of practice. You know, it's it's cost lots of money or it costs lots of time. Right. Whereas actually our gifts are the things that come naturally to us. They're the things that are so easy that we so often overlook and we do not value them as gifts. You know, if you don't mind me using the example, we've done one of these talks before on Instagram Live. 
and you were so brilliant at effortlessly and beautifully calling up on the people who were joining the live, talking about who they were, you know, how they were connected to you, how brilliant they were. Whereas I was sitting there seeing these people come in, feeling so flustered, not knowing how and what to say. And had a discussion with our mutual friend, Anna from Mardi Bam, saying, isn't Em so brilliant at that? I just could never do that. She thought, I couldn't do that either. And I shared with you, and I don't think you'd realize that actually that's very much part of your gifts as someone who is connecting people, as someone who's bringing people together. You know, when it comes easy to us, it's so easy to overlook. Um, and yet, you know, we think about uh, understanding our soul frequencies, understanding our gifts as something brilliant, right? And it totally is brilliant, but it's also scary to do. Because mm -hmm. stepping into our soul frequency also says going uh, and saying goodbye to a part that no longer serves us. And that part that no longer serves us can be so ingrained in our comfort zone that it can be really tricky. And so this is why I'm particularly excited about doing this work at somewhere like RDOC on your retreat, because you have created this space where people can feel safe, where people can feel grounded. You know, you mentioned the film Pretty Woman, walking barefoot on the ground, feeling grounded, feeling secure, so that we feel resilient to make these changes. Mm. Um, and I think that covered most of it. I'm sure, I'm sure some more things will come to my head. <laughs> I, no, it's absolutely perfect because what it does is it gives us like a different lens to look through, mm. you know, and, and I know that lately I've been looking at different trainings to do like, oh, shall I do a training for this yoga? Then I'm like, no, I don't think I really need that. Shall I do this training? And I'm like, you know, since our talk, especially I've been like, okay, what skill set do I have that is just me? Mm. That is like my soul frequency. That is who I am. And then I love what you say. I appreciate what you say about that letting go like when I made that transition from working uh in a store working for Lululemon when I first left I was like I said to my husband I was like but that's me you know that is what I do and uh and it was a really interesting transition to start to adjust to a different working pattern to listening to actually what is it that actually I'm good at not that I think I should be doing well, that's my identity. And that's why I think going on retreat can be really good because you have the opportunity to step away from that habitual pattern of your identity and possibly shift it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you kindly gave me a Kashik Records session as well, and I've got some of my notes here. Um, but I'd love for you just to share, before I go into that, if we have time, what a session and if anyone's listening to this and you're like they're like oh my god like I'm just like I need to know everything about Marina I will share some more details at the end about Marina's up and coming events and where you can find her um but I'd love for you to talk just briefly what a session with you is like mm. if you can because I'm sure that they're they vary in nature <laughs> Oh, they do vary. And it's it's all about <laughs> what each individual is looking for and their focus and intention. Um, always my intentions with the sessions is to make them as practical as possible. And I think that surprises people when they when they start working with with, you know, I'm self-proclaimed woo-woo because you think, oh, it's so nebulous, it's all floaty. No, 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 no. We're here to be practical. We want to see tangible impacts and results. So to narrow it down slightly and talk specifically about soul frequency readings, with each of my one-on-one -on -one readings, I um, always require uh, um, an intention to be set by the client beforehand. And they send this to me, it takes no more than five minutes, along with details of, you know, their, their name and their birth date, where they're born, so I can connect to who they are as a person. Um, and before the session, I will go into the Akashic Records, their own, because each of our souls has their own Akashic Records. And within there, I ask for the information about what their soul frequency is. Um, I also, if it comes up, we look at any blocks that are standing in their way, any codings, any patternings. Um, but that comes more with more in-depth readings when I go into past life stuff. With the soul frequency itself, we I could spend hours talking to someone about it because there is often so much 
um, so many things that are holding us back in terms of societal expectations, limiting beliefs, you know, the stories that we tell ourselves that stop us from being in our sort of true soul frequency. And the reason it's brilliant to be able to work with someone to find out what your soul frequency is, you know, whether it's me or someone else, is it's that person who's there to reflect back to you. You know, we can't read the label from within the jar. And that's why it's so powerful to, you know, work with people like that. So after the soul frequency reading, you know, within which you get uh, information about what your soul frequency is, what the polarity is, there's always that polarity, the, po the positive and negative in inverted commas, um, and then how to actually use that information within your day-to-day -day life. We then do a uh, visualization meditation to really bring that in for you. Um, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful hour that it's one of my very favorite readings to do. Um, and I, I would love to share it with more people. That is great. And I, I love the two, the two, big things that I take away from there is the you know we call we often call it the good and the bad um when I learned how to teach yoga we often call it the we we do a theming template for a class uh, so you'd have all the poses you'd have the quotes you're going to use um and we'd have something called the barb which is kind of like the spirit the feeling and then we'd have a little box where you'd write the shadow the mm -hmm. shadow side because there's always a shadow there has to be a shadow because if it's just well if we take ourselves back to science right there there always is a shadow and um I believe it was um I think it was a Dalai Lama I'm not sure who said you know there's always a mosquito in paradise right <laughs> probably the most beautiful places on earth always have a mosquito so there's always something but the more we make friends with that and the more we understand it then the further we're going to go rather than pushing it away. Um, and I think the second thing I appreciate about your work is this sense of practical application, like results-based work. And I think that's what grounds it for me, is like, I know during our conversations that we've had over the past, I don't know how long we've known each other, six months, eight months, something like that, um, I always go away with like, even though we, we're talking about our personal lives and our work, I always go away with kind of like almost like three action points. <laughs> like <laughs> yesterday in my notes, I was like, right, well, I need to do all my notes. And then I had these three action points that, that had just naturally come from our conversation, but also you had done the reading for me. So you have that kind of insight into who I am as well. And that is what, for me, it, it, it has to be grounded in some way and I get that from your work so let's see where we are okay so we're 20 minutes we've been in here for 20 minutes so I'd just love to firstly ask you if you want to share what you've got <clears throat> well firstly we're gonna to have to do another talk because there's human design there's astrology there's tarot there's confidence coach etc etc um and I really want to talk more about human design another day but for right now I'd love you just to share with the listener what you've got coming up this year is there anything coming up soon and I'll put it in the notes on this as well but what what's coming up that where where people can find you so you can find me on Instagram at talk with marina and my website is www www.talkwithmarina.com um, in terms of what I've got coming up readings are available to book most of the time there's a calendarly link on my Instagram but in terms of big events coming up um, I am relaunching my signature signature group program um, which is called confidence kit in March I've run it a few times before and it's been very successful and it includes those practical elements with this more spiritual side to really step into our own confidence, basically supporting you to be the most confident version of yourself. Um, and, you know, just to echo what you've been saying about this work, it's not just for the moment. This is for ripple effects for the rest of your life. It is transferable. So that's really exciting. Um and, you know, having talks like this with you and other people will always be popping up on my Instagram. Um, 
And I think the final thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we speak a lot about grounding in this. Um, one of my favorite things to do every week is my newsletter, which comes out on Tuesdays, which I would love to invite you to sign up to. It's free and it's called Ground and Grow. And the reason it's called Ground and Grow is because for me, I know I can only learn and grow and do as much um, as I am grounded. You know, it's about thinking about, you know, nature, trees. A tree can only grow as tall as deep as its roots are. So it's that sort of duality of that grounding of the work in order to reach higher and reach those new opportunities. Amazing. I love it. And you've also got um, a free a free workshop coming up on January the 17th. I do. <laughs> At 5.30 p.m. Overcoming Obstacles workshop. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> that is an hour long workshop and it's very, very practical. Um, and it's about it's 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 a method that I've developed, which basically can give you the tools to overcome any obstacle in your path it really is it's pretty it's pretty game changing so I'd love to see as many people there as possible brilliant well what I'll do is I will send you guys that are listening live I'll send you the link for Marina's free workshop and where you can find her as well and if you're watching this in the future that will be the 17th of January so if it's past that date then check out for check out Marina's work for anything else coming up so we just have a couple of minutes left, literally two minutes. Um, so anyone that is l here listening live, if you're okay to be recorded, you're welcome to ask a question. I'll give it about 30 seconds. Um, you can always raise a hand. Or if you don't want to ask a question live, I'll wrap this up in about 30 seconds to a minute. And you could always just uh, speak briefly after we have finished the call. Great. Becky, do you have a question? Oh, just take that's it. Um, hi. What are the Akashic re records? Oh, good question. Okay. So the Akashic records are they've been described in various religious texts by different things. Uh, they are an energetic database, or they've been described as a library. And what they are is each person's soul has their own Akashic records, and it includes the information of each life you have lived big decisions, major traumas, things, you know, life purpose and things like that. So in a similar way that, um, you know, our body keeps the score, if we've had a trauma when we we're younger, it might affect how we live on a day to day basis today, whether that's sort of from a public speaking thing, if you sort of had a situation when you stood up in front of the classroom at age 10, that might impact how you feel about public speaking today. The same thing happens with past lives as well. So if, if we've had a big trauma in the past life, that can uh, affect how we show up in our life today. So the beauty about the Akashic Records is it stores this information, but we're also able to clear and heal the information. Um, so that's my brief intro to what the Akashic Records are. Um, equally, I have a whole page about it and a video explaining what they are on my website. So I'd be very happy to send that to you, Becky, afterwards. And if you've got more questions, just send me a DM. Amazing, amazing. And um, if anyone is interested in sound work and they're based in East Yorkshire, then just message me and I can send you Becky's details because she is creating beautiful sounds with sound bowls and all her magic over there as well. So if you're East Yorkshire, just let me know. Um, fantastic. So I'm going to wrap this up, which will give us about a minute just to chat off uh, off recording. So I'll, I'll be this just... It's just <laughs> I thought we've just got started but like, we, we can't do 30 <laughs> like 30 minutes let's see what we've got 20, 26 minutes we can't do 26 minutes I think we'll probably do another one of these to talk about because I think when you hear someone talking about your work you get the words but you also get the person and the it's like reading a play script right but then seeing um some a brilliant actor read it out it brings life to it so we definitely have to do another talk again if anyone is interested in the retreat reach out and I'll put notes with this recording as well so you can ask about that 6th of June three nights overlooking Loch Lomond on those beautiful parts of Scotland 
and I'm very excited to host that and have you there as well, Marina. So thank you for your time and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you so much.